Welcome back. I have been forced to grow grass. I am being held against my will in a pasture right now. Well, actually, I'm growing grass because we want milk and we want steak. And so as the seasons have changed and we're going from the warm season grasses, I want cold season grasses and food for our cows so they keep producing and I don't have to buy hay as much as possible. So today I'm gonna to take you along and show you what we have been doing in our pastures. And, and everything I'm doing is completely 100% original and I have not learned from anyone else and I'm gonna present it as if it's all completely new information that just dropped from heaven as golden tablets and I just, I just read it and I'm just interpreting it to you today. So just, just, just be overwhelmed with how brilliant I am. This is my kids joking around right here. Look, Dad, there's ducks in the cabbages again. <laughs> okay, that's, that's funny, I laughed. So this field right here is about two to three acres. Our pasture is divided up into three sections. We've got about this area, which I'm guessing is around three acres or so, maybe two, I don't know. And then uh, we've got an area around the pond that has a little more space to it. And then there is another pasture which is not connected to these two, which I'm gonna show you how we get to now because it's, it's exciting. But I'll show you how we get to it now, later, if that makes sense. Makes tons of sense. It's brilliant, it just came to me like that. Wow. So this field right here, we just over sowed a couple of days ago because uh, the cows have pretty much chewed it down. There's not a lot of grass left and then we we actually mowed it to make it even lower, which is crazy. But what, what we did was we looked and said, okay, what if we could just over sow this, right? So there, there are different types of photosynthesis. There, there are plants that photosynthesize at higher temperatures and plants that photosynthesize at lower temperatures. We have a mild winter here down in zone 8B, lower Alabama, and so there are plants that stay green through the entire winter. However, these grasses here are mostly summer grasses and they are dying down as we've already had a couple of freezes. And they're just not photosynthesizing, they're not growing, they're gonna wait until spring to grow back. But what if we could get greenery back on here and make the cows happy? There are plants that can do that. So what we did was we went out here in the field and started throwing seed. So what did we throw? We had about three different varieties of clover, red clover, white clover, something called Ladino clover. I tried to get arrow leaf clover, but I couldn't find it. I was just like, give me some clovers. Okay, so now we have a nitrogen fixer. I got some Austrian winter peas for part of it. I had a few of them. And I got some seven top turnips for a brassica uh, as another part of it. And then we got some eco-till radishes, which is a daikon. It's like the fancy daikon. Daikon is good enough for the Japanese for like 2,000 years. It's like, we got a market in the US. Let's call it eco something. Eco till, eco till, yeah, because it like tills, it holds, man, yeah, whatever. So I got some of those and I threw them around. And then we got some more grasses. I got oats, just grain oats, and rye, winter rye grain. And then we got winter rye grass, which is a nice, thick, green, amazing grass that grows right through the winter and into the spring here. So we got all those mixed and then I just broadcast this entire area by hand. Rachel helped me with a little of it, but I did most of it. So in about an hour, hour and a half, I had one of my boys mixing up two buckets of seeds. We just mixed all those seeds together to throw them at once. He'd mix the seeds by putting them into one bucket and pour it in the next and pour it back and pour it back and pour it back. And then he would bring me a finished bucket and he'd start mixing seed again from all the seeds I got. I got the seeds mostly from the local feed store. They, uh, farmers use all this stuff and people use it to plant their deer plots. I mean, if in doubt, you can just go and buy a bag of deer plot mix and throw that around because that'll be good for your grazing ruminants, your goats, your sheep, your cows, they'll all like it. So I, I was brought a continuous stream of buckets until I, I threw about five five-gallon buckets over this entire area of seed. 
bit by bit. And then after that, I went through here and I have a pasture drag. It's called a drag harrow. And what that does is it just goes over this grass and it kind of claws and knocks things down to the ground. And the reason I did that was I figured if the seeds are falling into this grass, I want them to have soil contact. I don't want the seeds to just be sitting on the surface. I want to knock them down a little bit. So the drag was for that. And then we're doing all this on our zero turn mower. I got to use zero turn mower at a good deal from a, a lawn guy. I took that and then after dragging it out, I mowed it. And so what that did was it shredded a lot of leaves and it took a lot of grass and just scattered it over the surface. So it's giving it a little bit more cover. If you've ever seen those guys working on the side of the road where they throw out some new grass seed and then they just take some straw or hay and toss it lightly over it, that helps keep it from drying out on the surface. Gives it just a little bit of cover, a little bit longer bit of uh, moisture and the seeds will just grow right through it. So that's what I was hoping by doing a light mowing of it and dropping it down to the ground, it would work. cow pie right here completely growing grain oats the oats passed right through the digestive tract of the cow and sprouted so this gave me an idea what if we could just feed seeds to the cows so let me show you something where I did that after we had done this and discovered it kind of on accident now this isn't a whole new idea I mean, even though it was completely, it's a completely original to me. I actually read about shepherds who would graze their sheep through a field that has a lot of good grass in it and a lot of grass that's setting seed. And then as they graze through, they're eating all those seed heads. And then they send them over into a poor field, a field that's patchy and not very well filled out and the sheep would manure that field and the seeds are dropping inside of that manure and they're coming along with their own fertilizer they'll sprout right out of it you would think it would burn them but it doesn't so you could take a bad area and overseed it so I thought maybe if she's milking the cows twice a day what if uh, we just kind of throw a little bit of uh, random seeds into their feed and let them eat it and the ones that don't get digested will over the pasture. I think I should try this with some grass seed. So right here, this is winter, winter ryegrass. This winter ryegrass, this is a, this is a manure pie chia pet. 
you can just pet it. Look at that. It got mowed, actually. That's why it's a little shorter. This is a cow patty chia pet. Isn't that amazing? So this is rye. This is rye grass coming up in here. What I did was one day, one of the cows was just staring at me, and so I got a handful of rye grass seed, and I, and I went up to her and I was like, here, Brandy, eat this. And so she did. And I found this one cow pie about three weeks later, which is all winter ryegrass. So it works. Let's take a look at the second pasture because over there, I, I think I kind of made a mistake. It's working, but I over sowed it about a month ago. And the mistake I made was I sowed it and then I mowed it and then I drag harrowed it. And so what happened when I dragged it after mowing it was I ended up clumping up a lot of the leaves and grass in the harrow and leaving little mounds of them here and there, which is not what I wanted. What I want is a distribution of grass and leaves kind of lightly across as much of the pasture as possible in order to cover the seeds like I was saying they do with the construction site. So as we come through here, this is coming to the end of our main pasture. This was just sowed. We made it, we made all this happen out here right before about 24 hours of rain dropped. So it was absolutely perfect timing. This entire thing should be sprouting um, very quickly here. But as we come over, we come to the end right here, you can see how this pasture over here has all of these green patches to it. There is a lot of green. It's not super even. And I think that's because of the order in which I did it. Plus, when you're hand throwing, it's not a perfect distribution. But I could still see there is a lot of activity, even in these brown areas. Got the old winter, winter grass that is brown and dying out. But inside of it, we have all of this rye or oats that's coming up in between. Here somehow we ended up with a ton of little brassicas. Those are uh, seven top turnips coming up right there. So we took the cows out of both of the areas that we over sowed and we took them to another pasture. So let's just walk along over there and I'll just keep talking to you. Because anybody that's stuck around to this point of me talking about grass and over sowing, you are truly the elites. It takes a high IQ to absorb all this information that's just spontaneously come to my mind with absolutely, I definitely did not read anything from Greg Judy. Certainly I have totally ignored Gabe Brown and Joel Salatin and just boom. Did you hear about that David the Good method? King Solomon, never heard of him. So this area around the pond right here is really nice because the cows can water themselves from the pond. They can go and, and get a drink. I mean, uh, they haven't gotten cholera yet, so I'm guessing it's okay. Uh, I don't know how animals just go and drink out of ponds and lakes and stuff without getting sick. And then it's like we drink out of a swimming pool and we throw up all our watermelon. I don't get it. I don't get it, but this is cool. This pasture is the second pasture, and as you can tell, there's not really a lot of pasture here. It's mostly pond. But this is all green. I see clovers in here. That's your uh, legume, high protein. There's a lot of greenery in here. This has been about a month since it was planted. And it was encouraging enough growth to make me think it would be worth investing in more. You know, we try to, you try to test one thing at a time to figure out if it's gonna be valuable to continue. And having done this smaller area and see how much greenery came up, it's like, I didn't know with how thick the grass was out here, all that thick, dead, dry grass, if these things were gonna come up and actually work. But they did. So here is how we managed to get from one pasture to another. This pasture ends right here at these woods. This is actually where the fence line ends, but we unhooked the fence because 
we created this pathway through here. So the fence should have stopped right here. We put the lines down to the ground and then we built this passageway. This is like something the Ewoks would build. This is not a permanent fence passageway. This is a, a one day fencing project of probably about 150 feet, maybe 200 feet of corridor. This is just a cow corridor, a cow highway that brings us back through. And what we did was we cut bamboo from some of the big stands of bamboo here. We cut popcorn trees. We stacked up, this is a popcorn tree right here, this huge rail. It's all popcorn trees stacked on top of some old construction debris. This is all just to kind of keep the cows in as they traverse the space. And then we just took lots of um, the brush and stuff that we cleared and threw it in here. But all the woods, I mean, this all looked like this back here. You see how thick these woods are. There wasn't a path here before. This is mostly regrowth woods. There's some old trees in here, but a lot of these trees are actually kind of young. So we found a spot that was kind of more shrubby and less tree-y. So we didn't have to work so hard and we kind of followed it. Just walked through the woods and walked through the woods until we found a spot that was good. So let's walk through. This is some of the giant yellow bamboo that's in our front yard. We found it, it's a timber variety of bamboo that's supposed to have really good shoots too. So I'm excited about that. But we cut some of that old bamboo. That's a really nice railing there. That is a strong one. So we got a bucket of feed. We took the fence down and we led the cows out. Two calves, two mama cows, and they pretty much stampeded after me. I started running through here with a bucket of feed and they chased me and then the kids got behind and we ran all the way around. Now this pathway ends at a live electric fence. This electric fence is on a different line from the other one. And we got a couple of acres here that were not, they haven't ever been grazed by our cows, but we couldn't figure out how to get them over here because we would have had to take them across the front yard and around an area that had no fences. And Rachel said, no way, no way. They could just end up wandering off into the county somewhere or hit by a train or something like that. So this area here, we had to make our highway to reach. And I, I mean, this is just such a cool highway. It makes me want to make highways through all of the woods because it, it just turned out so cool. It's like a great little nature walk. Let's go around and take a look at this pasture. We'll wander out and see the cows and how they are. Part of the delay on getting the cows over here, other than having to make a cow highway, was Rachel needed a place where she could actually milk the cows because those other two pastures connect and we have a stanchion and a milking area that was really convenient and out of the weather. And though you can milk a cow just out in the field, you don't necessarily want to because you end up drenched. So right here is where we built the new cow milking area. This is a really badly redneck addition that was done. It's, it's an addition to an old, old barn. There was an old, old barn here and then a bunch of stuff got built out from it over time. And as you can see, a lot of it's getting destroyed by termites and falling to pieces. It was never done well to begin with, but it's, it looks worse. However, it's still structurally stable enough to use. This was closed in for a chicken coop area. It had some rotten boards down here and some screening all over it. And what we did was open it wide open so Rachel can use this area. And there's a head gate right in here. So ideally the cows stick their heads through here. So when she's getting milked, she puts her head through here and you put some feed on this side and she just you just put this back and shut it and put the little chain over and hold it in there and she just stays there and she doesn't, you know, get fidgety and run away in the middle of being milked. But 
so far they haven't gotten readjusted to it, but it's only been a couple of days. So Rachel just puts a little bit of food out here and they stand there and they very contentedly allowed her to milk them. But this little area keeps Rachel out of the rain and it is connected to the other piece of pasture. And that piece of pasture that we just saw the cow highway leading to, this is the main gate for it. Hey darling, how you doing? That's a good little boy. That's trouble. Right there, that's a bull calf. And then we've got Sweetie Pie, who is nursing that naughty little baby who got weaned and then as soon as she got back with her mama, she started nursing again. The baby's name is Princess. And so she's a heifer. And then this is Brandy. So our two cows are in milk and then these are their two calves and the cows will get bred again pretty soon here, uh, probably in December or January. But this area here, we only mowed a little of it before so we could get pecans off of these great big pecan trees. We just wanted to be able to pick up the pecans. The grass was very tall back here so we cut around it. And then the rest of that grass has not been grazed on. It's not fantastic grass. Uh, there's a lot of sedge and stuff mixed in. But it's much better, I think, than what they had since they had cut down the other grass pretty well. It was really time to move them. It was just a matter of making the infrastructure to do so. And now that we've done it, we can drop this fence line again and send them back to the other pastures once it grows in and maybe a month or two. That first area around the pond will be ready and then the other one should be ready in two or three months. And as spring comes in, it'll get really, really, really thick and green. And then all the stuff that we planted will be dying out by April, May, and it will get replaced with the warm season as the photosynthesizing changes as the temperatures change. So all this to say, it's quite possible to over sow an existing pasture. Um, we're just experimenting with it and seeing what could work. I'm no expert on it, but it has worked for us so far and it's obvious that it's going to work because I did the first one as a test a month ago and it's really greening up and looking great and coming in and so I was confident enough to do the second one and now we ought to have tons and tons and tons of green material particularly as we come into spring and the we kind of get in between warm and cool seasons we should have been able to get it earlier, but we had a drought and we were just waiting on the rain for at least six weeks, which really set us back for the year. If you want to do something like this in your yard or in a small area for your chickens, I think it would work really, really well. It also works as a way to just cover crop an area that you're later going to till under and put in a vegetable garden or something like that. But it's, it's been kind of interesting to, to go from being a gardener to now having to grow grass for animals. Because always in the past it was like, tear the grass out, plant a food forest. And here I am trying to figure out how to grow better grass to keep the cows happy. So I guess everything goes in cycles. It's been fun. So thanks for joining me. Glad you could be here. I hope this was incredibly entertaining. If you got all the way to this point, you are the elite. Be proud of yourself. And until next time, may your thumbs always be green.